Hi guys, my name is Cash and you're watching Cashed Out Cars. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at internal wastegates on a turbocharger. We're going to be going over what they are, why we use them, and how they work. Also, I'm going to be going over the pros and cons of an internal wastegate setup versus an external wastegate at the end of this video. So let's get right into it. To start out, what is an internal wastegate? Now this is something that you probably hear talked about a lot and you think it's going to be something really cool and fancy, but it's really not. All that an internal wastegate is, is a bypass valve for some of your exhaust flow. On this turbo setup here, the internal wastegate is this little flapper arm here with this metal disc on it. And that disc lines right up with this port here, which I'm going to talk about later. Often, these wastegates are integrated directly into your turbine housing on your turbo. Mine is separate and it bolts right on, but no matter what, it's going to do the same purpose. And if it is integrated within your turbine housing and where the exhaust leaves the turbo, it's going to be considered an internal wastegate. Now that you know the basics of what an internal wastegate is, let's get into their purpose and why we use them. So as I said, an internal wastegate is a bypass valve for exhaust flow. And as you're driving around in your car with a turbocharger, you're going to be spinning up your turbo and making boost. Your exhaust flow is going to be coming in here right off of the engine and spinning up your turbine wheel right here, which in turn spins up your compressor wheel, forces more air into the engine. You make more boost, you make cool noises, and you go faster. Now, what you want to do is sometimes limit that boost so you don't damage your engine and blow stuff up and have a bad time. Now, one method of doing that is with an internal wastegate. And once you hit a certain boost level, your wastegate will open up and exhaust flow will start coming out of this port here rather than going directly through your turbine wheel and spinning up your turbo. Now that limits your boost once you hit a certain level. So once again, you don't damage anything, risk breaking stuff and have a bad time. So how does it work? I already started to talk about it before, but this is an actuator here that opens and closes that flap depending on what boost level you're running in your engine. Now the way that this knows when to open and close is there's a vacuum line here that under boost becomes pressurized because you attach that line to the compressor side of your turbo, to your intercooler piping or to your intake, whatever you choose. A lot of people run it directly to the compressor housing of the turbo. And once you hit a certain amount of boost, there's a spring in here with a diaphragm. And as you're building boost, you're building pressure that's building in this actuator here. And eventually that actuator is going to open when the boost level overcomes the pressure of that spring in there. Then your waste gates open and the exhaust starts coming out of that hole there rather than spinning up your turbo and your boost is limited. Now that's exactly the purpose of an internal wastegate is to limit boost. And now we could get into the actuators just a little bit more. Now you're probably wondering, if you have a wastegate actuator that opens at say 10 PSI, can you run more than that? And the answer is yes, you can run more than that. And the way you do that is with a boost controller. Now I'm gonna have a separate video specifically on boost controllers, but you could exceed the pressure that you need to open up your wastegate and run more boost. It's really difficult, however, to run less boost pressure than what it takes to open your internal wastegate. And to do that, you need to mess around with springs and other things that make this can easier to open up and make that valve basically easier to open up under lower levels of boost. So now that you know how these things work and what they are, let's get into the pros and cons of them. The pros is an internal wastegate is basically almost always integrated into your turbo exhaust housing. And if it's not, it's a simple bolt on part that's going to go right on, do its job, and you don't really have to do all that much planning. This is great because an external wastegate requires you to find somewhere to put it. You often have to bolt it to your exhaust manifold, which sometimes requires drilling and modifying your exhaust manifold. And this is really a bolt on part that's very simple and easy to use. Also, they're fairly inexpensive since a lot of turbos come internally gated from the factory. And also, they're good for the environment. Now, they're good for the environment because when you have an internal wastegate, all your exhaust gas still eventually finds its way out through the exhaust and goes through your cap and eventually gets into the environment that way. If you have an externally wastegated turbo and you don't run it back into your exhaust, 
you're going to be dumping those fumes into the environment, which give or take, I mean, it depends on what your stance is with that, but no matter what, it's not good for the environment. So I'm putting it as a pro for the internal wastegate because it doesn't hurt the environment in that way. So with a low cost and a high simplicity, you do get some cons of an internal wastegate. The first one is it could be a little bit sluggish. As you saw, this flap here sometimes takes a little bit to open and close. Another potential downside of running an internal wastegate is boost creep. Now what that is, is a wastegate that won't open enough or it won't open fast enough to allow enough exhaust to come through that wastegate port. This means that exhaust is running through your turbocharger wheel, your turbine wheel, spinning it up and making more boost than you really want to be making with your wastegate. Now, this really isn't a good thing because that means you could over boost your engine and exceed the amount of pressure that your wastegate is meant to hold. If you're tuning and you want to run lower boost, this could run into a problem. If you just want to make tons and tons of boost, you don't even really need a wastegate. You could just weld that thing shut and you'll be boosting to the moon. But if you're doing that, you probably don't even need to be watching this video. Two more really quick cons is since all your exhaust flow is going through your normal exhaust, it could just slightly limit turbo performance. And also since it is not an external wastegate that dumps into the environment, you don't get really cool wastegate sounds, which is what you hear on F1 cars and a lot of turbocharged cars that people build. And so guys, with all that said, that is gonna wrap up this quick informative video on internal wastegates. I hope you guys learned something. If you have any additional questions or comments, please leave them down below and I will get back to you. If you want to see these parts in action, I'm working on a budget turbo build on this Miata here, too broke, too boosted. And if you want to see that, check it out on my channel. So with all that said, like this video if you liked it and subscribe for more. And I hope you stick around for the next one. Take care.